So Ziz, great to talk to you. Thanks for coming on the channel because um, well, I've been wanting to speak to you for years because, <laughs> you know, your, your knowledge of guitar and the, and the bands you've been in um, is massively impressive to me. So, um, yeah, no, I kind thanks. of, no problem. I mean, <laughs> my channel is more like, you know, I, I do covers and I try to teach people how to play sort of Roses tunes because I always find like a lot of the tabs are wrong <laughs> and things like that. I'm a massive Roses fan and obviously the man to come to. The, the bravest man in the industry to take over John Squires. <laughs> According <laughs> to Noel Gallagher. Yeah, right, look, yeah. I mean, um, I, I've seen some great uh, versions of uh, Rose's songs online. Um, I've seen yours too, man, and they're, they're great. You know, anybody oh, who's you. learning wants to learn those songs, you know, they're, all the channels are online, you know, and yours especially, you know, they're, they're good channels to go to, um, to pick up. I, I just took a different approach, really. You know, yeah. um, when I had to learn, it was different because obviously I was learning the songs in uh, 96 yeah. <laughs> and I didn't have much time. I literally had, you know, a week or so. So uh, what I did was, um, what, what I did then is different to what I did now because I didn't have the tools available to me in 96, you know. Yeah. The internet was in its infancy and, um, you know, Google searching and all these things, it, it just it wasn't there really. So it was all by, still by the same process, you know, records. Yeah. Uh, maybe down. a website. Um, I think uh, maybe Steve, who ran uh, Fool's Goal, he, he had a website and he was really <laughs> anal about the equipment, you know, he's duplicated the equipment right down to the Mesa Boogies and the yeah. Fender Twins and stuff like that. So, you know, there, there, there was that side, but pictures were limited, images were limited, videos were limited. Mm. Uh, you know, John's pedal board on the floor, you know, the limited pictures, you've got yeah. this kind of, you're guessing at what colour is that, yeah. kind of guess. Black what and white photo, is that, is that purple? Is that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> is, is it Ibanez? Is yeah. it Boss? Is it Maxon? <laughs> you know, is, we're trying to work these things out. <laughs> but that's interesting because, you know, so you had a week to to get ready for the roses and and uh, you had to learn, you know, second coming, all the early stuff. That must have been a nightmare. <laughs> um, I mean, I, it is a question I get asked often but uh, you got to understand from my perspective you know i was coming from out of prog rock you know out of the band asia yeah. so you know learning yes songs and learning right. uh, asia songs was like uh, and that wasn't easy because um um steve howe's guitar parts and sounds are very unique you know he's got the most unique equipment you can imagine you know custom made gibsons cups custom fenders gretches guitars that age back to the you know 1940s even you know or even earlier wow. um you know he had uh, and the amps he has a very unique sound it's more kind of jazz influenced um so coming out of that it wasn't difficult to master second coming because it was based on to me to my ears it was based on a kind of a jimmy page type of approach to sound yeah. uh you know uh, which was easier than the definitive stone roses album mm. which had that uniqueness about it because of that um i think very early days of the band not early early because obviously the early days were more kind of uh you know that gothy kind of thing <laughs> yeah, yeah. going on yeah. whereas that album the sounds and tones on it very creative yeah. not to say that second common isn't creative but it was more predictable it's like i i play by ear i've learned by ear so if you played something i could tell you what you've been listening to what your influences are i could predict the notes you're going to go to because i know it'd be based on blue scales or yeah. it'd be based on this kind of go-to scales so second coming was much easier because i could guess where the notes were going to be without even having to learn it yeah um but the time the thing that took time is that john was meticulous about every single line that he played he probably jammed over something and then took the best bits and then kept writing until he'd finished every if you notice about you know the recordings all the solos are meticulous in the notes yeah yeah and that it, they're all melodic or oh, there's some jammed parts to it but he's kept those through recordings and then he's built up built up i mean it's almost kind of like i don't know in that kind of artistic spectrum maybe and that yeah. somewhere in there where you're so you know ocd about you know the notes being right and and writing you know writing all the solos i mean i'm an improviser i, I rarely ever 
write like that. I, I kind of just improvise and I, I believe in first takes and second takes, right. you know. Yeah. Uh, but I did notice that about it, you know, about when I was analyzing the material and trying to learn it. I don't know how you feel about it, but I did feel that it, everything was composed. Yeah. All solos, all melodies, all yeah. all lines. Yeah, I, th I think you're. I think you're right. I mean, I think uh, I was speaking to Nick Bryan in my last uh, uh, interview on my channel, and um, he was talking about how the Roses would. I think they had most of their uh, to their second coming stuff written before they went in. There's a couple of tracks they wrote in the studio, but they took a long yeah. time in there, and a lot of they did a lot of jamming. And I think John, like you say, would take the record. I'm, I, my feeling is he. It would, he would take those recordings home maybe or into wherever he's staying, listen to them back. Yeah. What's the best bit of that? I'll keep that bit, you know. Keep you, that you, bit, keep that, and then write on top. Yeah, yeah. like, you know, uh, there's, like, you can hear like three versions of that spreads on, mm. on YouTube. Uh, and there's like acoustic version, There's and then you can hear the progression. And then I can hear, like you said about the Led Zeppelin stuff, the Jimmy Payne stuff, especially with like that spread. I mean, that's a lot of that's like Mo Moby Dick for me. And apparently they were listening to the song Remains the Same quite a lot, what John was. Yeah, you can hear influences yeah. in or yeah. not just Rose's albums, in all albums, you know, you hear influence of other bands, of yeah. songs that you recognise, of melodies and, and sounds. It's like Led Zepp's influences coming you know, from David Graham and all those folk players, Bert Jansch and, and uh, you know, those guys coming back from their holidays on, you know, from Morocco or Tunisia or wherever they used to go, <laughs> yeah, yeah. sitting in on those sessions, going home and writing Kashmir, you know. This, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of, and then again, you know, the Roses influence for Second Coming coming from that. And obviously, um, you know, uh, personally, I mean, you asked me about the learning of the material. Yeah. Um, what I was equally interested in was John Leckie. I was interested in uh, Steve Dorsey. I was interested in uh, Hooky. I was interested in the producers yeah. just as much as I was interested in the bands because normally the go-to thing is to uh, have a look at a photograph and go, oh, he's using these pedals, yeah. see him playing, and you go, oh, he's using this guitar. Yeah. But as you well know, even with Jimmy Page, you think it's Les Paul Marshall, but it's actually Telecaster yeah, Ross, yeah, yeah. or Silvertone or something like that. Yeah. And, you know, different amps and uh, they're never what you perceive them to be. Jimi Hendrix, Marshall Stacks and yeah. you know, Stratocasters. And then everything was modified. You know, was, he had a, a genius guy, you know, doing his pedals and stuff and yeah. modifying everything. Uh, a lot of Fender amps were used yeah. in the studio. Say, yeah. um, so it's not always what you see. Mm. And then on top of that, some of the greatest albums, as per, you know, The Roses, I think, both albums and all the, you know, singles and mixes that have been released. Um, the beauty was the combination, just like George Martin met The Beatles. Yeah. He had that input, and I think John Leckie has that input. If you listen to the production of the albums, yeah. it's equally important to, if you're learning the material, to not just learn the material and buy the pedals and the guitar, mm. but also to look at how the sound was produced yeah and you know i think that's one thing that the roses don't do when they perform if you've seen the roses since they reformed yeah you know it's i mean i hate to say it, it's almost like you know I, I, i'm not gonna say it i get myself in a lot of trouble for the words but you know um you can see that the attention to the album detail isn't what you would get with tri tribute bands and covers bands who are right. uh, recreating the definitive Roses sound. Yes. Um, the Roses have kind of moved on. That's why it's so difficult for me to decide what to play when I joined the Roses because the band wanted me to play the music the, where they were up to, which yeah. was, you know, Masabugi Stacks and all that kind of yeah, thing yeah, and yeah. a rockier, raunchier sound as yeah. per Second Coming. Yeah. Whereas the album, which is what people like to hear, the, the album. Yeah. Um, people want to hear that kind of the birds meet, you know, Simon yeah. and Garfunkel's stroke, John Leckie's production stroke, yeah. whatever else was in there. Yeah. Kind of sound. It had a nice smooth sound, didn't it? And obviously, like, uh, there's a lot of pedal. I mean, obviously, you had to play that stuff as well. And like, things like, even, you know, I think people, I, I get quite a few, a lot of views on I Want to Be Adored, my version of that. And um, yeah. I found that. <clears throat> It sounds easy, you know, like the notes aren't that difficult, but if you if you get the, the pedals right and the sound right, then that's when it comes yeah. alive. That's when you get the, you know, the the an, uh, analog uh, 
delay and you know there's um there's not taver in there as well and things like that and you start building up the soundscape of of what that then sounds like that's when the magic happens I think. yeah i mean was it an octaver or was it an actual overdub you know that's the question yeah so, yeah well i had to make a choice <laughs> but yeah that's, yeah, yeah exactly but i mean I, I fortunately i've set up um my pedal board uh for oh, recreating wow. you know production uh, john's sound and the production but i've done it in a way that avoids having to buy huge amplifiers and stuff like that i mean i couldn't have those amps on in my you know i'm in the <laughs> my loft space yeah as you all know you got family in the house yeah. you can't have these amps blasting no. away but today this day and age you know um do you want me to show you the setup or? oh yeah i'd love to yeah i'd love to see it thanks yeah i saw yeah. Um, so I saw i'm just Instagram, gonna switch right? cameras i can do it quite easily yeah that's the setup so, so this is my setup um as you can see right this pedal board is half original and half um a contemporary take on it oh, wow. what i mean by that is this big blue fuzz face is john squire's fuzz face one of his fuzz faces wow that's one of the old uh, it's a silicon based one yeah uh, it's a bit more stable than germanium uh, but this is one of his old fuzz faces that i inherited when i joined the band yeah oh wow um, that's amazing so the silicon ones they're not, they're not affected by heat as much is that right oh. Not as much as yeah. germanium, yeah. yeah. Oh, well. They still can original. be, but they're a little more stable. And that's why, you know, guys like Hendrix use the silicon fuzz faces yeah. as well. Yeah. You know, a lot of people did. Um, so everything except for this thing here called Air Step, that's controlling my cameras. So I'm switching between <laughs> my cameras <laughs> using this Bluetooth uh, controller. Guitar um, sound, um, <laughs> MIDI controller. I mean, if you're interested on it, it's a company called Exonix uh, called, uh, Air Step. Oh, amazing. Uh, it's got a rechargeable battery in it. And the only reason it's got a cable is it was a more convenient, way, a more stable way of controlling the computer. I'm basically controlling hotkeys from that little pedal. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so, but, yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. But, uh, Ask away. I yeah. think um, uh, on one of your posts, I think you said that you had two fuzz, fuzz boxes because they can, you know, fuzz can go before. I, I do, yeah. And... So I have two fuzz faces here. Yeah. So one is the original um silicon fuzz face that used to belong to john i inherited when i inherited the stone roses equipment which included uh, the fender twins oh, uh, I want to talk about well. <laughs> uh, not the mark three boogie though that he did, he kept um, oh, okay he probably had his original fender twin at home and then he had these fender twins which are his touring twins yeah, uh, it, the it? other fuzz face is this one here which is a brand new fuzz face made by a company called benson all right um and it's a germanium fuzz uh -huh. but it's been really stable and the reason why it's so stable is that it has an internal thermostat <laughs> oh wow <laughs> which, which you'll see there's a a, a light uh, you, i mean the cameras will be deceptive but there's an amber light yeah. for when the temperature is not optimum right. for the optimal for the uh, transistors so the thermostat will kick on and off and as the transistors cool the light will change to green as you can see it's gone to green i don't know if you can see yeah that i can change. see that yeah i can see that yeah oh, wow yeah it also has an impedance dial on it as well uh that knob is like rolling back the volume on your strap or a um a capacitance yeah. that keep, retains the brightness of oh. Oh, you know basically the yeah. impedance changes doesn't it when you roll the volume back yeah, on the yeah, guitar yeah. so that has it built in so you don't need to change anything on the guitar you can just set and forget on oh. here for the sound that you want and that's a benson um yeah oh, but, but it's the same thing it's a fuzz face type uh yeah. fuzz box uh, but it's a modern take and also the other beauty is you can have the wah wah pedal before the fuzz face ah which is what you can't do with this silicon fuzz here no. it has to sit after the buffer um, so this is a buffer built into it very cool. um so you would have that after i mean if you look at the photographs you know to get that sound that's the way round you'd want it so i have this in front so that i can get the sound that i want off the album having the wah before the fuzz and this fuzz can handle having a buffer before it whereas that can't so what i did oh, was you see this little switch here yeah um, i'm kicking it with my heel yeah that is a loop switcher so basically the fuzz face the blue fuzz face is sat in the loop oh it's right in yeah. ascend and return so when i click it on and off 
and you see the light change there, it's gone blue. Yeah. That means the, the signal is flowing through the fuzz face. If I kick it off, it means the signal is bypassing the fuzz face and going di directly from input to output of that little switch. Oh, amazing. So, so internally, there's options. a relay that sends the signal to the fuzz face, and you're switching that relay, switching the whole fuzz face in and out of the circuit so it doesn't sit in the, the flow of the signal. Oh, amazing. That's yeah. really interesting. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, it's it does. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> technical, um, but yeah. So which, uh, you can do that these days. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. What tunes would uh, John or you yourself uh, use the fuzz face on? When I listen to the album, I can hear it. Yeah. The square waveform of the fuzz. Yeah, yeah. I can hear the the girth <laughs> of yeah. the fuzz face. It's obvious. It's like waterfall. The the solo in waterfall is fuzz face. You can hear it. The grrr, the girth of it. Yeah. Um, the resurrection. The solos in resurrection yeah. towards all the outro is all fuzz face. It's okay. all squared off fuzz face. Yeah. The intro to adored all the solo parts are fuzz face. Yeah. Um, you know the. It's the stuff he had, you know, he had, um, just switching back in, I've got a mini tube screamer, but he had a, you know, full-sized yeah. Ibanez tube screamer. Or it might have been Maxon, you yeah. know, but it's an Ibanez tube screamer. It's the same thing. Yeah. Maxon made the tube screamer for Ibanez. So I bought this mini fuzz here. It's 45 quid, you know, it's like. Yeah, I've got that one, actually. <laughs> I've got the exact one. Yeah. Yeah, it's brilliant. Well, you know, it's worth the money. It's exactly the same circuit or it's close enough to not notice any difference. Yeah. The other main feature of the sound, uh, apart from the actual order in which the pedal should sit, is this Ibanez unit next to it, this yeah. lilac unit called the Ibanez Chorus. That's important for and the sound. You can use all the chorus pedals. Mm. Fine. Yeah, of course you can. But if you want that sound, it's the Ibanez chorus. Yeah. That is the sound. Because the delay time of it sits on very close to flanging. Uh, and yes. when you lower the speed, you almost get a flange type sound to the chorus. I don't have um I mean I don't want to duplicate everything because that's not nah. you know, that's what I'm, what I'm doing uh, in my life. Nah. But I'm using a Gretsch, so I am using the same type of pickup pickups, mm. which would be these uh, filter trons. Yeah. Which he had on his uh, country gentleman, didn't he? That's right. Yeah. yeah nice. So the same pickups, filter trons, uh, Bigsby, um, you know, decent gauge of strings. I mean, that's a basic sound. I'm in the both pickups on position at the moment. It's very clean. Yeah. Nice. I normally flick up on the bar instead of down. Yeah, really? <laughs> down is down is like yeah. Whereas up is yeah. Yeah. Try <laughs> Completely different sound. Yeah, definitely. And where you play on the neck will give you either the brightness. Definitely. See the difference in tone? Yeah, definitely. Amazing. So that's, anyway. Yeah, that um, sounds great. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's a bit of an Aziz sound, isn't it? Because Yeah. You know, it really is. It's like, you know, I don't, we, right, in the mainstream anyway, we don't hear much of that sound. And if I hear that, I'll just think, think you basically <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I know, nice. there's another video I saw on YouTube you, you had this pink strat and you just you changed a few of the settings on the strat I think and then you did this I had the like, pink strat yeah. I had the original was it the, was it that strat. One? yeah, uh, yeah. and what do you cool. expect I was in the roses <laughs> I inherited the guitars just showing it was off. the resurrection strat it's it it showing it. off now folks but yeah <laughs> <laughs> no but you just you changed it a little bit and you, and you did a, like a oriental it's on my youtube channel it's yeah. on my youtube yeah, channel if you look at my youtube sound. channel there's, there's an interview with myself and manny by the bbc or somewhere like that and yeah. i'm sat there with that pink strap yeah. you know it's i mean just coming back to this pedal board i was just saying that the the main kind of sound um so over here this is the contemporary part. So what that is, is a line six HX stump. So it's an amp modeler. So what I've set up on that is actually two amplifiers. 
a, a Fender Twin and a Mesa Boogie Mark III. So, right. and, <laughs> and they're running in parallel yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah, so it's a stereo setup. I switched between having two Fender Twins on, two separate amp models. Um, so I run a stereo Fender Twin sound and also I'll run a mix of Fender Twin and Mesa Boogie coming out of that. As you can see, the outputs, you can see that, that I'm using two outputs, two inputs going in, two outputs coming out. Yeah. Um, so it's a stereo setup, amp setup, but it's an amp sim, you know, going, and you, that's what you're hearing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thought you, I, I was going to ask uh, what, what, what you've plugged into because it sounds, you know, twinish, but yeah. Yeah, it's a Fender Twin. That's yeah. the model I'm using, a Fender Twin, dead straightforward. <laughs> Yeah. but i've set up the different patches for each song so i mean um i could go right down to maybe i've labeled them so <laughs> of the 15 16 songs i can remember <laughs> yeah <laughs> um this is my kind of sound for adored but as you know it's, it's too clean so the uh, tube screamer would be on. But also the chorus pedal would be on. So kick that on. And of course, I've got this um, this unit here. This. Uh, Eventide H9. Now the reverbs and that are amazing. I can, with that, I can replicate John um, John Leckie's plates that he used in the studio. Oh, that's what wow. I'm doing. But at the moment, I'm using a panning delay, which you can hear if you're in stereo. Because yeah. That's the basic. So that sounds great. <laughs> I mean, you could tone it down by taking the tube screen out. Yeah. The tube screamer is generally on in Rose's songs, yeah, uh, just, live anyway. Yeah. In the studio, it's a different matter, you know. But I, yeah. I, I kind of use that pickup. Um, but the main sound for me is mix it, it's too bright that for me. So yeah. it's about mixing the fuzz in. So I've tried different versions of this where I've used. <laughs> do as you said um the, the track parts i um i kick in this octaver so there's the mosaic by digitech it's just yeah. an octaver but it's a higher octave so yeah. you can but with the beauty of it is you can set the level of the octave to balance it in you can set the brightness of the octave so it's not harsh or you can have it's tonally just uh, dial back a little bit so <laughs> I don't know how that sounds, but um, I presume you can hear the octave. Yeah, sounds, in sounds there. amazing, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. And the other factor is I use reverb, which I have over here on this, uh, looks like a little mini wah pedal. Oh, yeah. But it's actually it's actually a, a send control for the reverb unit, which is up here, which is um, a Source Audio Ventris. Oh. Um, so it very, uh, it's always on. Uh, if I take out this delay from the H9, you get a better idea. The echoes coming from the Strymon timeline up here, which is emulating uh, an, uh, John's boss analog delay. Um, and um, the other, which is like a bucket brigade kind of sound, that's what I'm using on the timeline. Yeah. 
but um, the reverb I can throw in on notes in parallel. You can see how long I can make a note last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not on, it's only on when I want it to be in the sense of what I want to push. Right. Wow, that's so good. You see how long I can make the note last? Yeah. I can do that anywhere. So I can make things smoother. I can make things kind of, uh, but the thing is, as the note, is stretching over I can play on top of it I can move on to the next bit without the reverb being triggered by that oh nice so they cross over yeah you know, that's how I that so that's how I perform the Rosie stuff live yeah because um, some of those stuff kind of, is, is um you know they, they, he's maybe dubbed some bits over the other bits and like you said that yeah note, that's that note hasn't finished yeah. yeah and you can get that kind of studio sound live mm. can't you then if you if you can so extend. that's what i was saying yeah, i try yeah. to reproduce the studio techniques and the way that it was put together uh to recreate those sounds um i mean i'm using the um full space at the moment but i could switch it out the circuit and bring in the benson it's a lot more aggressive, isn't it? That? I mean, you, you can play it like this if you want, where you can hold the chord, both parts of the chord together. Um. This is proper yeah, tree. This is as it's honestly. It's, it sounds. It sounds amazing. And I also noticed on your. Sorry to move on. I'm not trying to move on, but <laughs> there's so much to talk about. But there, I noticed um, yeah, okay. there was a love pedal. Uh, is that right? A love pedal um, amp fifty on your. Yeah. So. Am I this is my own in introduction really so uh this is the love pedal amp 50 this little one down here yeah. just because basically got a volume control and what it is um if i take everything off i suppose uh, you can hear the sound of the amp <laughs> So you got that's the basic amp sound. But what um, the trick was with John on stage was he'd kick in his Meta Boogie, you know, for, for added kind of brownness and uh, oh. for all the heavier sound, not the heavier sounds, all of them, but for a browner sound, for a more distorted sound, he switched the Boogie in as well. Oh. Um, so he'd have both the Twin and the Boogie running in the same sound and it's as time and it sounded, you know, dirtier. Yeah. Um, that was the other part of it. Is that how um, you got some of those second coming sounds uh, on stage? Like yeah, brain? that's it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I had a switching system that I was made so I could switch between the boogie and the marsh. I was using the Marshall as well as the Fender oh, Twin. Okay. Um, so what I found is this pedal, the uh, Love Pedal Amp 50, it's a beautiful take on the JTM 45, one of the, the very first Marshall amps. Yeah. So I love that on top of, at the same time as the uh, Fender Twin. He's got browner. It's slightly dirtier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they can go all the way up as so, well, can't they? Yeah, can say, they can sound proper, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, plexi, I, I, they're they? fantastic amp, and he's done a great job re reproducing this Marshall. So what I've actually done is I've mixed a Fender Twin with Marshall an old Marshall JTM 45, oh, yeah. which is probably on some recordings, you know, there are Marshalls involved because I know of the equipment I inherited. Yeah. But um, say for instance, if we were playing, I'll go to um, She Bangs the Drums maybe, you know, so I've got the basic sound of it. Is that kind of, 
I'll put the delay in now. Right. See, I can make the chord kind of last. Yeah. And then um, when it comes to parts like that, yeah. um, I normally kick the uh, the amp fifty into those parts where I want to kind of go. So, I mean, it adds that extra without taking away too much. And then I might add in an echo, just um, which is more pronounced to get the... Depends. We all we do have different ways of playing, and people have observed, you know, yeah. it's played like this. But sometimes I found that the roses reform, uh, reshape the method of playing it for convenience. Yeah. It's like listening to, um, I, I'll give you a good example. It's like um, I had a live version of the roses uh, playing all, all the songs which I had to learn. But when I listened to the album, I thought that's not the same as. You know um, the album in terms of where it was played. So I might have played some like in Resurrection. Yeah. The next line live was always, yeah. <laughs> but on the album it's that it's uh, here. You know. That was with, with the um, Apple Love um, pedal on, the Amp 50 pedal on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Without it, it's... That sounds great. Every Roses fan's got the whole tune in the background in their heads playing along whilst you're playing that. <laughs> <laughs> I've added in those kind of production techniques, like I said, about how I mix reverb into the and what kinds of reverbs. You know, I'm using plates because John Lecky would have used plate reverbs yeah. in the studio. Uh, John Squire would have used spring reverbs and then he'd have had his uh, Alesis unit throwing yeah. in the digital reverbs. Uh, know that Kreza was switching in and out yeah. um, so it's the right combination of factors so this is one of the other guitars that I really like playing in the Roses set um, nice jazz master yeah this is a really nice jazz yeah. master um, I'm gonna is it a 60s one? It'll, it'll need tuning up I mean it's a reissue uh, oh, jazz yeah. but it's a, yeah, it's a 70th anniversary but with these guitars you can get the squires like the Jay Mascus and things like that you know they they're great, great guitars, all of them. Um, when I was touring with Ian, I was using a 1964 Fender Jaguar mainly. Yeah. Uh, but I just found that the notes didn't last as long as with this Jazzmaster, for instance. So yeah, I, I changed to the changed to the Jazzmaster. But I mean, it's a beauty. It's a really nice color. Nice. Uh, and I've got a lot of sun on this <laughs> at the moment, so it comes across almost white, yeah. grayish. It's that um, really light blue color, isn't it? Beautiful. Yeah. Um, but it's one of my main guitars, this. Uh, I do normally have the trem arm in, but I can't be bothered to go find it. <laughs> <laughs> Elephant Stone, for instance. Yeah. Um, and there's that great intro. Um, but the intro was always, for me, um, well, for say like Elephant Stone, you've got that big drum intro and so forth. And, yeah. Um, so I looked at the album and I looked at the way it was played live and I thought, 
isn't it more important to bring the album version back so you get that kind of You can you can hear the kind of darkness, but also the metallic nature of the reverb. Yeah, yes, which is what I really like about it. You know, um... sorry, my wire's still on. So I'd work on sounds like that just to reproduce what the album was saying, you know, yeah, yeah. and not just what John Squire was playing or what he was using. Yeah. It was a way that John Leckie mixed his yeah. uh, guitar or whether it was somebody else, you know, was the other producers, Mr. Delson and, you know, OK, and all the other guys that worked on various tracks, you know, they all had a different kind of input on the production anyway. Yeah. So. But like when you kicked in that, yeah, that reverb for that riff, you know, anyone can play that, well, you can play the riff. But yeah, when once you click that on, then yeah, like you say, it's it's the album version, isn't it? I mean, within that tune, you know, uh, when it comes to the breakdown, you get that uh, kind of. I'll just switch on to this so you get Is just basically that timeline uh, yeah. in a reverse delay mode. Oh, that sounds so cool. <laughs> Come back over to the main. I mean, if you want to, you can play um, straightforward like that. Or you can switch in, you can switch in the uh, octave to give a twelve string effect, um, which is down here. Switching that in again, the mosaic. And yeah. then the you know the outro part you definitely switch in the octave. It's those little bits, isn't it? You know, like yeah. you know, it's, it's amazing putting the stuff on, like, like you say, to get that studio sound. You know, it's the sort of that, that that backwards part when you had to use the Strymon for it. That's the sort of part. Like back in the day, you'd go, "Yeah, well, forget that bit because I can't do that <laughs> in my bedroom type thing." But now we can. You know, yeah. there's things. That, you know, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. now we can. And it's. Amazing. I mean, if you want to do, there are other, there are units which are. Uh, well, actually, they become collectible. That Danny Electro did a brilliant delay, reverse delay yeah. in a small pedal. But now they become collectible, so <laughs> you know to find them at yeah. the right price, difficult. Because I've got this guitar on, I, I can switch to say something like capoing on the fifth fret now. Um, I mean, that was on the first fret I capoed, by the way, for yeah. those that are interested. Um, I found it most convenient on the first fret. Uh, for a, a elephant stone, um, but if I was doing something like, um, oh, I don't know, uh, yeah, Mersey Paradise, for instance, for me it would be fifth fret. But again, I'd pick in the twelfth string. Same sound through. You know that? Yeah. 
yeah oh wow <laughs> <laughs> it's great no it's obviously brilliant to watch you doing these things because you know that first sound you had sounded great i was like oh yeah it sounds just like mosey paradise then you click on the october yeah, and it, I mean, now I now it sounds like mosey paradise <laughs> yeah, but if you listen to the yeah. recording listen to it closely then yeah. you think to yourself is that a 12 string guitar there he's yeah. playing on mosey paradise yeah. is it eight acoustic or electric you know there's a blend of sound in there so to reproduce it i thought well i i I get clever about the octave by using the mosaic here which is a 12 string kind of upper pitch um but i can blend it the way that i want to blend it in yeah also what's important is the echoes you know that you use because we're talking boss pedals live then getting reproducing the say like the boss analog delay unit it's a bucket brigade delay so you've got to have that but then there's the studio delays there's the elisis delay um so as i say thanks for that and um where where can people reach you on the you know social media instagram things like that um thanks for asking john Uh, i'm on my website is aziz.co.uk um my youtube channel is aziz ibrahim music um and I'm the same on Spotify and Amazon and all the, you know, the music outlets uh, for finding yeah. that music. But um, social media, Instagram, I'm Aziz Ibrahim 56, the same on Twitter, the same on Pinterest, the <laughs> same on uh, TikTok, the yeah. um, same on Discord, the same on <laughs> Twitch. <laughs> So, do you get me yeah, I'm on I do, yeah. <laughs> so definitely check him out on maybe, those because they're so interesting maybe you can put them in the links down below oh, definitely know, put them in the links for you. Yeah, yeah. absolutely definitely worth a watch everyone so all right thanks yeah. very much no worries mate thanks john for having us